Great. Thanks, Azadeh. Good morning, everybody. Um, appreciate your time this morning. This morning's uh, topic is going to be the customer support portal and how to use that, including product activation. Um, some of the things that we're going to talk about this morning on the customer support portal, where you can register and manage your users. You can create and manage your, all your support cases. You can register and manage your assets within your organization, get knowledge and answer to all your questions. Uh, there's tools and resources that are available on there, and you get access to the live community via your customer support portal. So the first thing we want to talk about is how to get to your customer support portal, right? So the first thing you're going to do is you follow this link here um, for the customer support portal. That'll take you directly to it. And when you're there, if you haven't already, you'll need to create an account on the portal to get started. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. The first one would be to how to create your customer support portal user account. If you're doing a self-login creation, say if you're the first person within your organization that's going to be setting up for Palo Alto uh, customer support portal, um, your account super user can also be used to create this login. So if you follow this link that's going to be posted in here, it'll show you how to go to that. And there are some slides that we'll go through for that. And then you can also use the registration link. So a registration link can be generated by the support account portal super user. So if you already have somebody within your organization that is registered as a super user, they can actually help set up your, your portal accounts for you. Um, they'll send you a link where you'll provide all the information. Um, you don't have to provide any order summary number or company ID because it'll be direct, directly coming from your super user. So all that information will already be set up for your initial login and creation of your account. All right, so how to create your portal account again. So if you're gonna be going to just creating your account, you'll log in, you'll see your first page um, off that link that's uh, to access your customer support portal. This is where you'll see it here. And you'll go cl click the create my account button, which is right here, this green one right here. If you already have an account, if you're not sure, you can always go to go to my support account and see if you have an account already. Um, if you're not, if, if if you don't remember if you had an account, it'll tell you whether you do or not. If you don't, then you just go back to the create my account, and you'll start seeing your pop up screens here um, that'll look like this. So the first thing you're obviously going to do is you're going to enter your email address. Click I'm not a robot, right? We don't want any bots or anything like that. Um, accessing your portal account. And then you're going to create a new support account, um, register device using serial number authentication code. Again, if you're a new, if you're the first one in um, and you're creating your own account and uh, you haven't been provided a link from your super user, you'll need to have that information there. So you'll need to know your serial number authentic authorization code. And you can get that from your, your licensing details uh, from your order or your salesperson. Creating your account. So again, going to complete the new new user registration form, fill out all the valid information, right? Um, name, um, uh, email address. Again, if it's the super user uh, account, you'll have to fill everything in. If you're getting the link from your super user, then you'll require then you're required to fill in a lot less information. Uh, again, you'll receive a link to activate the account. Super users, again, will receive notification of your new account. So once you're set up, your super user within your organization will be notified that you now have a new account and can now access the portal. You'll still need to click the activation link to finish that. And then you'll be able to log into the customer portal and you'll be taken to the home tab every time you log in. So some key roles within the support portal user, you've, you've heard me mention uh, super user, right? There's a couple other user roles that can be set up within your organization. The super user obviously gets access to everything, right? They are the, the uh, basically, if you want to just call it an admin user, a super, excuse me, super admin, right? They, they manage all the company information. You'll see that's the only one that can do that across the board. Um, they're the only ones that can create new users. So if you're you're not a super admin or super user, excuse me, you cannot create another user. Manage members, super user can do that. Other users can only do read only. Uh, manage assets. So there's quite a few that can manage assets based on your roles. Again, again the super user, standard, limited user, the threat researcher. Um, if you're doing a trial, if you're doing a, if you're a BPA, so if you're a person that runs your best practice assessments. Um, you can also man access that. The super user can manage groups. He's the only one, again, they're the only ones that can do that. Again, only ones that can create new users. Case management can only be done with a super or a standard user. So if you're limited or other than that, other than these two, anything else, 
you cannot do any case management. So you have to be at least a standard user to open and manage support cases for your organization. Um, again, the, uh, the super user can licensing API, right? So they can activate the licenses, create new user groups. Um, a few other things here with the wildfire portal, threat vault, right? So these are the, the main, but the main focus is up here, right? Is managing assets, creating groups and opening cases or you need to be at least a standard user to open those cases. All right, speaking of cases, how do you open a support case? So um, if any of you have worked with Palo Alto before, right, our primary way, in fact, our, our only way now, uh, excuse me, not only way, but the, the main way to open up cases is through our support portal. So you would click on open a support case, right? So you'd be on your, your, um, your support portal and you'd go to open a support case and then you would put on the relevant information, right? The serial number information, what the what the what the issue is, right? You need to access a specific support case from support. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Let me go back. How do I go back on here? Google Slides. No, no, I'm too far ahead. I'm sorry. So, if you want to um, manage your support cases, again, if you're a standard user, you can manage any of the support cases when you're within your organization. So that means if you have a case that's currently open, you can see what the status is. You can respond to those cases. You can uh, raise any kind of, uh, provide any information, provide any logs or, or anything that the, the um, tax support engineer is asking for. You can also go ahead and escalate cases within the support portal if you need to, within a, within a specific case or, or multiple cases if you needed to. The other piece, the other prime piece for, for your support portal is, is managing your assets. So how do you view and manage your assets within that? Again, you go to the support portal, you'll see activate products, right? Right below the, the support cases where you open up support cases, you'll see activate products. So when you click on the activate products, it's gonna show you what products you're actually available to activate. And then you can go through the process of activating those products. When it's, when it, again, when it's activated, it's going to show you the products that you purchased, right? It'll tell you, hey, you've got this many products ready for activation. You can see what your activation history is. So if you want to go back and see, um, you know, what products you've already activated in the past, when they were activated, you can definitely do that from here. When you go to activate products, you're just going to pick the product you're trying to activate. So if you're, if you're the primary Palo Alto person within your organization, you need to activate all of them, you can do that. If you just need to activate say, uh, Prisma Access or SAS or Cortex, you know, you do the ones you need to activate at the time. And all you need to do is click those, those blue buttons to start the activation process. So once you get that, once you click that, right, you're gonna get another pop-up box. It's gonna tell you, hey, these are the products that you're trying to activate. And you're gonna click the start activation. If those are not the products you wanna activate, you can back out of this by just hitting the quit button right down here. And once those are activated, once you hit the activation, they'll now move into the activation history, right? So once you're completely activated, and again, you can click on your activation history to validate those were activated. You'll see things like the order number, when it was activated, right? And everything right here. They're gonna be grouped again by products are listed together by timestamp for the last activation group. So they're gonna actually go by, by the latest one activated will always be on top and then moving down to the oldest. All right, so we have a new feature within the uh, customer support portal. If you haven't seen it, it came out a, a few months back called the, the network security tab. So basically what we're trying to do here is be a little more um, user-friendly for lack of better words with the customer support portal because there are a lot of tabs in there. With the network security tab, you can click on there and see your basically your, your primary um, uh, licensing and uh, what's activated, what's, what's, uh, what's activated, what's due to expire, what has expired. And it goes through everything. It looks at the next generation firewalls, Panorama, Prisma Access, SD-WAN, all the, all the, all everything that would be in Prisma Access now will be on this one page that you can actually get to a lot quicker than digging down into your um, cloud services tab and searching for different things. So basically, when you open up your customer support portal, you'll scroll down under assets. You'll see a new tab here. If you haven't seen it before, it's called network security. When you open up the network security tab, there's a lot in here, right? So again, it's going to tell you all your assets. Hey. 
Do I want to see all 99 assets? Or if you've got more or less, it's going to tell you whatever it is. You may not want to see that. You may be looking for a specific one. So what are we looking for? Well, maybe I, maybe I want to look at um, Prisma Access, or maybe I want to look at SD-WAN. So you can click on those to get a, a, a lot smaller list. So when you click on any one of these, it's going to give you a list down here of those particular products that you selected. As in this demo here, or this example here, it, they selected 99. So it's just going to start listing everything out here. Now, if you want to do that, that's fine also, because you can sort, these are sortable columns. So if you click on these columns, they'll sort um, alphabetically, um, A to Z or Z to A, depending on which one you want to do. Again, with all these here, so you can do that also. Uh, but again, if you're looking for a specific type of product, say it's your panorama or next generation firewall, and you want to get a smaller list, you can definitely do that by clicking these top line headers up here. You can also look at your asset dashboard by how many licenses you have total, how many licenses are expiring, right? So they're within that uh, 90 day period where they're gonna be coming up for, for renewal. Or you can also look at licenses that have expired. And those are, we, we call that the call to action dashboard. So you're aware of when you go in here, hey, do I got any licensing that needs to be renewed? And maybe I missed a renewal notice or, or I need to reach out to my, my account team or even my customer success team to say, hey, um, are these up for renewal? Can I get somebody to get me a quote and, and talk about this particular product? You can do a global search here. That means you can basically type in what you're looking for, right? If you know what the uh, what the product is you're looking for, you can search by model. You can search by any one of these headers here, uh, serial number, asset name. And then you can also um, go over here. If you go over here, after you've done a global search, it'll say how many assets are displayed. You can look at the account actions. When the account actions, so you can go in here, you click on here. It'll tell you different things about... Um, uh, the different things you can look at right here, asset actions are here, right here. So it tells you how many days are left in it. Um, you can edit the asset, right? If you, if you got it assigned to certain um, locations, you can make changes to that. Uh, you can reset the filters. Again, your filters are set by whatever you want to pick on here, right? This particular one was picking a, uh, the PA series. You can click on that and close it out and just list everything if you prefer to do so. So the call to action dashboard, I kind of touched on this already, uh, contains filters to find the assets to satisfy the call. I'm um, sorry, I said 90 days, it's 60 days uh, for the license renewal. Um, again, you can find all the assets that have expired licenses, find assets that are BPAs. Uh, BPAs, if you're not familiar with the term, I mentioned it earlier, is your best practice assessment. Um, and just a quick pitch for that, a best practice assessment, will take a look at your current configuration. There's a, there's a, a file that we can pull, run and pull um, actually, you can have one of your super uh, users be assigned somebody as a BPA um, uh, admin, and they can run that file. And what it does is it'll tell you, here's, here's where your current configuration is and how it matches up to our best practice assessments for the particular products that you want to compare it to. And then um, if, if it's with the SaaS product, we can definitely have some discussion about that and, and how it works for you guys and how you can improve your overall security. If you have Prisma Access, we can also do the same for your customer success team. Um, so getting back to, yeah, so BPAs, numbers in the dashboard indicate number of assets that satisfy the criteria again, right? So in this particular case, right, we used our, our company as a demo, right? 163,000 plus, um, assets, right? And this is a great way to go and say, this is again, a great example to start using these instead, right? If you've got an your organization that has a lot, you don't want to look through this, right? You want to go, Hey. I just want to start going to my Prisma Axis and start filtering down from there. So this is a great way to use this tool up top um, with these header lines and actually sort through those items a lot quicker. All right, here's the account actions, right? So I, I was talking about that earlier. Here's where you can, when you go to the account actions tab, you can activate an asset, right? So you can go through there and do it here. Like I already showed you one other way you could do it, but you can also do it here. You can deactivate a license. So say you're not using that anymore. Um, it, you didn't renew it or for whatever reason, right? You're not going to use it. Maybe it's a, um, it's for an old organization that you're no longer um, using it for. Maybe you want to reapply it. You can deactivate it. Um, you can use a set of device tags. You can download a complete file of your asset um, current history and you can do any incoming transfers, right? So if you're getting any incoming uh, devices transferred over from another account. 
All right, so moving on, some other items in here, um, and we can, uh, if you have questions on these, I can bring up one of our demo ones at the end of this, um, tools. So we have some other tools within the, the support portal. Um, we have uh, the tools, the URL filtering threat checks, right? So you can click on there, put in a URL that you want to, you, you suspect may be a threat to your organization, and we'll give you our assessment on it. Uh, you can do the updates. So you can view the latest updates for your uh, Palo Alto Network's assets. Uh, of course, there's a couple of different ways that we look at those. We have the dynamic updates that are included, uh, that include new and modified applications, threat protection, data files, and then you get the software latest versions. So if, if you're, you're an organization that likes to maybe be, maybe be one or, or two versions behind, um, right? Uh, due to, you know, you got to test things out and, and make sure they work with the organization before you load them up. You can go here and say, okay, well, I'm at this version here. What's the latest version? Maybe I'll download that, put it in my lab and test it out. That's where you get it through your updates here. Uh, we also have tabs for resources, right? The, the knowledge base, right? To click on here where you get all our tech support articles and how to's and all, all your questions here. Great resource to go to first. Um, in fact, I always recommend if, you, if you've got a non-critical issue, you got a question or things like that, that's always the first best place to go. Um, or you can also use our live community for that to see what other people have posted those kind of questions. Our learning center, that's where you get your education, right? So if you've got products of, of Palo Alto that you want to take a look at and, and get more in-depth knowledge of it, um, say it's ADAM or Prismax, it's SD-WAN, there are courses in there, digital courses that you can take um, uh, on demand at your own time and pace. Uh, we also have our security advisories, right? So security advisory are very important. You should be um, checking these. You can actually set yourself up to get alerts on the security advisory. So I suggest when you get this, if you haven't, click on this link that's going to be included in this presentation and go and subscribe to the security advisory so you stay on top of those. Uh, we also have life cycle review. We have a threat database that you can take a look at. And of course, our tech docs, all within our resources tabs. All right, so that is a quick run through of the support portal. Um, we want to make sure we leave you guys plenty of time for Q&A.